Behold, my brother, we have shared the same destiny, plowing the same furrow. I now fall in the field at the end of my day. I know that you greatly love your mountain, but do not for the sake of the mountain give up your work of teaching. Hello, my friends, and welcome to True Heroes. I hope you are all well, no matter where you are in this world. Today, we're going to look at the lives of Saints Cyril and Methodius, who spent their lives traveling to other countries in order to bring those countries to the Catholic faith. Let us begin their story. Cyril and Methodius were brothers, born of noble parents in Thessalonica, and when old enough were sent to Constantinople that they might, in the great capital of the East, learn the principles of principles of literature and of the arts. Both of them made great progress in a short time, but especially Cyril, who obtained such a reputation for learning that as a token of distinction, he was called the philosopher. Methodius afterwards became a monk. Whilst Cyril was judged worthy by the Empress Theodora at the suggestion of Ignatius the Patriarch to be entrusted with the labor of instructing in the faith of Christ the people dwelling beyond the Chersonesis, which people, being taught by his precepts and incited by the grace of God, abolishing their numerous superstitions, he added unto the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Having excellently organized the new Christian community, he returned, filled with joy, to Constantinople, and betook himself to the same monastery of Palacron, wherein Methodius had already retired. In the meanwhile, the fame of the success gained in the country beyond the Chersonesis, having reached the ears of Radislas, Prince of Moravia, he was earnest with the Emperor Michael III in negotiating the grant of some evangelical laborers. Cyril and Methodius being therefore designated this expedition were received with great joy in Moravia, and with so much energy, care, and ability did they strive to infuse into the minds of the people the Christian doctrine, that it was not long ere this nation most cordially subscribed its name to Jesus Christ. This success was in no small measure due to the knowledge of the Slavonic tongue which Cyril had previously acquired and of very great avail likewise was the translation which he made of both testaments of the Holy Scriptures into the language proper to this people. Indeed, Cyril and Methodius were the first to find alphabetical letters whereby this language of the Slavs is signified and expressed, and on this account they are not undeservedly held as the originators of this same language. When favorable rumor brought as far as Rome the glorious fame of these achievements, the Pope, St. Nicholas I, ordered these two illustrious brethren to come to Rome. They set out on their journey to Rome, bearing with them the relics of St. Clement I, which Cyril had discovered in the Chersonesis. At which news Adrian II, who had succeeded on the death of Nicholas, went forth with a great concourse of the clergy and people to meet them in token of veneration. Then both of them, having sworn that they would persevere in the faith of blessed Peter and of the Roman pontiffs, they were consecrated bishops by Pope Adrian. But it was the divine decree that Cyril, ripened rather in virtue than in age, should end his mortal course at Rome. He passed away, and being dead, his corpse was borne in a public funeral to the very grave that Adrian, the Pope, had prepared for himself. Later on, the holy body was taken to St. Clement's that it might lie near the ashes of that saint. And as he was thus born through the city amidst the festive chanting of psalms, with pomps rather triumphal than funeral, the Roman people seemed to be paying to the holy man the first fruits of heavenly honors. After the death of his brother, Methodius, on his part, being returned into Moravia, there applied himself with his whole soul to be an example in his works to his flock, and day by day to strive more and more to further Catholic interests. He likewise confirmed in the faith of the Christian name the Pannonians, the Bulgarians, and the Dalmatians. Moreover, he labored much among the Corinthians 
to bring them over to the worship of the one true God. His time there was, though not always good, he was accused to John VIII, the pope who succeeded Pope Adrian, of suspected faith and of the violation of the custom of the ancients, and he was summoned to Rome, where in the presence of Pope John, several bishops, and likewise the clergy of the city, he easily defended himself as to his having ever constantly maintained and carefully taught unto others the Catholic faith. After his defense, Methodius returned into Moravia and persevered in fulfilling still more vigilant, vigilantly the duties of his charge, and for this even gladly suffered exile. He brought over the prince of Bohemia and his wife to the faith, and spread the Christian name throughout the length and breadth of this land. He carried the light of the gospel into Poland, and as some writers assert, founded the Episcopal See of Leopold, and having gone as far as Muscovy, properly so called, there raised an Episcopal throne at Kiev. Afterwards, returning to his own people in Moravia, feeling now that he was drawing near his mortal term, he designated a successor, and having, by his last precepts, exhorted the clergy and people to virtue, he peacefully passed away from this life which he had made to be his path to heaven. Even as Rome had paid homage to Cyril, so did Moravia lavish honors on Methodius when dead. Their feast, which had been long accustomed to be kept among the Slavonic people, Pope Leo XIII ordered to be celebrated yearly throughout the universal church. From the lives of these two saints, let us learn to sacrifice our lives to spread the Catholic faith to our fellow man. Next time we will talk about St. Elizabeth, Queen of Portugal, who spent her reign as queen in constructing charitable institutions and religious houses and in taking care of children, even those of her enemies. Until then, God bless you all, my friends. St. Cyril and Methodius, pray for us.